Jay Rutherford, and this video is all about the brand new Fender Tone Master Twin Blonde Edition. film crew and a sound crew so that when you had your hometown middle of tour Saturday night headlining rock club show at the basement east in Nashville Tennessee you could get cool content and in the middle of the show has this ever happened to your tube amp I think the reason any of us are talking about Fender's Tone Master series of amps is because of stories like that. The reality is, is a digital simulation ever gonna completely replicate the sound of a perfectly mic'd up, perfectly biased 1965 blackface Fender Deluxe in a studio? And the answer is no. But we're still going to talk about it, and I'm still going to show you why I think the Blonde Edition is maybe the closest we've ever been in the guitar amp world to crossing the digital divide. Now this video is not going to be a super technical scientific spec rundown, nor is it going to be an A-B comparison uh, of the Tone Master Twin to a real twin tube amp. Uh, but it is going to be sort of my experience with the amp. Uh, I want to say thank you to Steven down at Fender in Nashville, uh, who let me come into the office and try both versions of the Tone Master. Uh, and I will say that the new Blonde Edition has some serious improvements to the original. For one, we're using Celestian uh, neodyninium speakers, so the tonal shape is going to be definitely more mid-range focused. Uh, and second, in the, the vibrato channel, uh, the Fender team has taken out the bright cap, so uh, more modern drives can kind of hit the front end of the amp and get a little less fizzy.
I like consistency. If I know that wherever I'm going, I'm going to get kind of the same gain structure, um, it's just easier for me. The thing about the Tone Master series is because there's such convenience in the gain staging, you can kind of dial in your sound for any stage volume. Now luckily, three days after I got this amp, I had my first gig since COVID. Uh, with a Grateful Dead cover band that I occasionally fill in for called The Stolen Faces. And it gave me the perfect opportunity to test this out. Now, in my mind, there are sort of two tests that I was kind of running this amp through conceptually. I'm not going to go into the details explaining the science behind it all. You can look it up for yourself. But basically, it's will this amp pass the uncanny valley of the player and two does this amp pass the touring test of the audience so the main thing i think people will be skeptical of the tone master amp series about uh other than tonal characteristics uh, is just the feel um it's really hard to perfectly simulate the feel of tubes or valves. But with all the conveniences the amp offers, does the feel get close enough? Does it pass the uncanny valley? Uh, which if you don't know what the uncanny valley is, it's basically we have this propensity to be disgusted by CGI versions of humans that are close enough to be almost human but don't actually convince us. We relate more emotionally to like Toy Story characters. Now with this amp, there is a little bit of compression that happens because it's a digital simulation. It doesn't feel as good as a real tube amp, but it's pretty darn close. And if you're a working man in a live cover band and you don't want to worry about your tubes going out and you're also fighting for stage noise amongst another guitar player, uh, a super loud drummer smashing the cymbals, that little bit of compression that happens actually is kind of beneficial. Now the audience is a whole other matter. And I 100% think this amp passes the audience Turing test. And what I mean by that is this thought experiment about AI, where basically a human middle person talking over the phone to another human and to a algorithm. If they can't tell the difference between the human and the algorithm, then for all intents and purposes, that algorithm is somewhat artificially intelligent. And I gotta tell you, I don't think there's any person in the world in a blind in a blind test that's watching a band from the stage. I don't think there's any person in the world that would know that this is a digital amp and not a tube amp. I think it 100% passes the audience touring test. <laughs> And honestly, when I played this gig last weekend, I was blown away by how the Tone Master performed. And the audience loved it. I most definitely will be using this amp again in a live context. So in the final analysis, will this amp convince a seasoned pro? Maybe, maybe not. But it most definitely will convince the audience. Who's this amp for? This is a working man's amp. It's convenient. You're not going to have to worry about tubes going out. It's familiar. It's the Fender sound, and it's a really good version of the Fender sound. It also looks exactly like the amps you've grown to know and love. It's versatile in its volume and gain staging. You can get your sound at any stage volume, and you can even record and play in the middle of the night at home with sleeping family members nearby. It makes improvements over the 2019 version one of the Tone Master uh, in the top end and in the mid range. And it also passes the touring test in a live context. 
As the industry pushes ever towards new digital horizons, things that wouldn't have worked 15, 10, 20, 30 years ago digitally are now commonplace. Entire records are mixed in the box and you'd never know the difference. This may not be the version of the AMP digital divide that you're willing to jump across, but we're getting closer. Good shit, Fender.